everyone. Thanks for joining me for the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mom AJ, model, actress, and social entrepreneur. Circumstances are temporary. Your purpose is not. And though we may all have been dealt with different circumstances in life, our experiences as women is universal. This is a safe space for women to be able to divulge their personal stories, share their life lessons, and tell us how they overcame their various obstacles. The goal here is to empower women to fulfill their life purpose by learning from others. Join the movement that celebrates the tenacity of women healing through storytelling. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning back into the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. I'm Mommy AJ, your host, and I just want to thank you, as always, for listening, for tuning back in. If you haven't heard the past episodes, I recommend going back and listening. And today, I want to go straight into talking about Instagram versus reality. I'm joined by my guest, my puppy, Honey. If you're watching, you can see her. Always remember that the podcast is also viewable on YouTube. Um, Today, I look like a rich (laughs) biatch, okay? I'm wearing my little coat. (laughs) Um, I'm cold, so I'm going to just keep it on, okay? But thank you for watching if you're watching on YouTube. And make sure you listen on Anchor, Spotify, and all other streaming platforms. So let's get right to it. So I wanted to talk today about Instagram versus reality because recently I feel like um, it's just been a lot going on. And um, because of the pandemic, before even the pandemic, social media was just really taking a toll on my mental health. Um, And I know I'm not the only one. And so I'm just like, what is going on? But I I realized even more so during and after the pandemic, well, we're still going through the pandemic, during the pandemic, after quarantine, because we're sort of kind of out of lockdown, but not really. LA is like still very much, well, we, they put us back into a lockdown actually. So we're like back on half quarantine. But, um, People are traveling, people are moving around, and if you're not comfortable moving around, you're mostly in the house, which I've been, mostly in the house. Except for obviously when I go get groceries and uh, run errands and different things, just, you know, go out to get air, but I'm not like, I feel like some people are out, out, like events, which is weird during this time. And I can't help but feel some kind of um, some kind of way, I guess, about feeling not jealous but like resentful almost. And I feel like that's something that we're all experiencing to some degree. Instagram, at the end of the day, is a highlight reel of people's best moments. They're going to post their best moments. I appreciate when someone can be super vulnerable and really show themselves, but that's, you know, it's not often that that happens. And it just seems like, although people are being, you know, it's, it's not wrong to show who you, who you are. It's not wrong to show your amazing life it does tend to skew everyone else's perception of what life could and should be. Imagine a kid that's like in the Philippines or just anywhere that is seeing, you know, all this lavishness of these influencers that they're following, maybe in LA. I can't imagine how that must feel sometimes when you feel like, wow, people are living this way and I'm here with not much. And not to say that they wouldn't be happy with in their, in their um, circumstances, but I couldn't imagine what kind of toll that takes on someone's mental health, especially young adults who tend to place so much value on public approval, public... Um, 
just yeah, public and and community approval. Because me, as a 29 year old woman, still sometimes feel some type of way, so I can't imagine. So anyway, I just want to um, use that as an antidote. But if you haven't seen the social di- dilemma, I recommend watching it. It's basically a documentary talking to the creators of these social networking apps like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, etc. The people who made, you know, these apps for us and showing how they're also affected by the things that they have created. And it's really, really interesting. So if you haven't watched it, it's on Netflix. Definitely recommend But the social dilemma shows us that the obsessive appeal of social media, but basically it's a great documentary, check it out. The social dilemma showed us that the obsessive appeal of social media and social networking isn't by mistake, but by design. Its addictive quality is in fact a feature built by engineers, scientists, and coders who study and understand human behavior. These social media networks are essentially psychologically manipulating us without us even being aware of it. To stay on these apps longer, to see more ads, to spend money for their profit, okay? They're literally exploiting our vulnerability so that we can continue to just keep dialing back in, keep dialing back in just so we're seeing more of their ads and making companies more and more money without us even being aware of it. And this is crazy. Essentially, social media has evolved from just being a tool because a tool essentially is something that just, you know, sits there idly waiting to be used. Usually to better your life in some way. And one of the uh, scientists in the documentary actually mentioned, like, no one's mad at a bicycle because bicycle bicycle helps you get from point A to point B. It provides exercise. It it's a fun tool. It's a fun toy. Whatever. Social media isn't just sitting there. It wants something from you. It wants you to participate in it. It's an addiction and manipulation-based technology that is demanding your attention, time, and participation. It is seducing us to use it with the algorithms that they write, with the coding that they write to literally get us back in there. They study our our behaviors to see how we're acting online and they can... feed us more of that same thing. That's why they said um, you can like literally be radicalized in like a month using social media. If you've ever heard um, of some studies that show that if you are someone that um, is already skewed in some particular, um, like if you're skewed already in, in some particular train of thought, say you're a right-wing conservative and you get on Facebook and all you click is on right-wing conservative, you know, propaganda, you might end up digging yourself in a hole where by the end of a month, you are a neo-Nazi ready to shoot some things up. And that is wild to me because basically... The algorithms, the algorithms are built in a way where if you're already, if you already have a viewpoint that you um, agree to or or adhere to, it will just continue to show you more and more and more of it. And you kind of sink into that tunnel. That's why you can be on social media and feel like everybody is left. Everybody is progressive. Everybody, the world is this way. And then if you're on the right side, you you can feel like everybody is, you know, pro-Trump and MAGA and like, so it's polarizing. It's creating a polarization in our society, literally by what they continue to feed us and show us based on our behaviors. 
which is very dangerous. Social media has also affected our, our voter turnouts, so much so that they're blaming Facebook for their part to do with the, what was it, the 2018? No, 2016 <laughs> elections that brought Trump into presidency. And that is just wild. So yeah, social media is no longer a tool. It is a manipulation and addiction based technology that is literally seducing us and is pursuing us and using our own psychology against us. Edward Tuft, who is an American, I can't say this word. Edward Tuft, who is an American statistician. How do you say this word, y'all? He studies statistics. <laughs> He's a professor of statistics at Yale. Said that there are only two industries that call their customers users, and that is the illegal drug industry or the illegal drug world. Okay, scratch that, scratch that whole thing. Edward Tuft, who is a statistician, is that how you say it? He's a professor of statistics at Yale is quoted saying, there are only two industries that refer to their customers as users, and that is the illegal, illegal drugs world and software. We're users, not even customers or consumers. We're, we're past that. We're users because it literally is a drug. Social media literally has become a drug. Being on it releases dopamine, which is a hormone, a feel-good hormone. And the more you get it, the more you want of it. That's why you find yourself like on it. Oh, I'm just gonna go in there and check it for like, you know, two seconds. I got a message to uh, check and then you're, you're on there for like 30 minutes and then an hour passes by. Or at least that's my experience sometimes. I'm like, no, 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 I really need it. It's, it's like for inspiration. I'm just going to go on there and, you know, just, just look at a couple things. Maybe I just want to be inspired for like some content creation or I just want to be inspired by whatever I'm working on. And I will have dug myself into a rabbit hole and seen one of my friends, cousins, neighbors, boyfriends, sisters just had a baby. Like, how the hell did I end up here? But that's social media for you. It is meant to drag you into this tunnel if you don't have willpower. And honestly, willpower can't even help you at this point because it, it has just done such a great job of, again, using our own psychology against us. And so you get addicted. You get addicted, period. And... No one is immune. Even those creating these um, algorithms and creating these apps are susceptible to their own creations. One, um, one coder that was on The Social Dilemma even mentioned how he had to write code in order for him to stop going back on Reddit because he had a Reddit addiction. Like he was always on Reddit reading different articles. That, and you think it's productive. Sure, it can be. You're might, you might be learning some things. But when you've spent three hours of your night after work on an app that you could have been spending that time with your family, spending you know quality time with your kids, you start to see like this is not more than just, you know, an app. It's, it's an addiction it's an addiction. And now I just want to talk about how it's affecting our mental health. I'm not trying to paint a, pa a bad picture about social media because it is a very amazing, it still can be a very, a very amazing tool. A lot of people are on there for their businesses. It's a great way of marketing, clearly. Um, millions of users are on there daily. So it's definitely 
an amazing thing when used well and when you can really control yourself on the amount of time that you spent on there. But it is affecting our mental health and our self-worth and identity is being affected the most by social media. We aren't evolved or equipped enough psychologically to handle all of this social pressures. And whether you feel social media, we aren't evolved or mentally equipped psychologically to have adapted to the speed at which social media like overtook society and then affected the way that we respond to our environment. And what that means is although it is helping us to connect to each other and feel less, we're able to feel less lonely because of it, because we're able to talk to people all around the world. The world has become that much smaller because of our use of social networking um, apps, you know, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, Instagram, they're all helping us to connect with each other. And in that sense, it is a beautiful thing. It's beautiful that I can connect with my friends in Asia, in Africa, in Europe, all the same, you know, and, and, and be, and not feel far from them. But we weren't equipped for everything that came along with it because it is changing society, it's changing our brains, and it's changing how we deal with everything. Social approval or disapproval is real. When you post something and you're not getting likes, you're not feeling like the hottest thing. I know when I post something and I don't get a lot of likes, I'm just like, damn, what do I need to do? What, how come I didn't get enough likes? How, how come I'm not getting enough engagement? I really pulled out all the stops. Like I really, you know, I really sat there, did my makeup, did this, did that. And I didn't get all the likes I thought I was going to get. Damn. And like, for me, I need it for my work, you know, as a model, like it's become more than a tool. You know, it's become my portfolio. It's become my body of work, which is a cool thing that I can show my body of work with this. But again, because I'm showing my body of work on Instagram, somebody's going on there thinking, oh my God, this girl's life is perfect. And it is far from it. But I'm not someone that just, you know, I'm very vulnerable and I, I consider myself pretty, you know, very honest, but I'm not someone to just post myself crying on there for what, you know what I mean? Like, and that's not because I want to uh, portray myself as this perfect thing. I'm by no means trying to be perfect, but I just don't want the, the, I guess, I guess the pity. Like, I don't want to get on there and, and be fake. I think sometimes people are trying to do that for attention and that's just not real. And I, I just, I'm just not that type of person. So yeah, whether you feel social approval or disapproval, it is real and it can affect your mental health. Young girls and boys especially are susceptible to that. We tend to conflate our likes and hearts and thumbs ups with value and truth. We tend to think that the more likes we get, the more value we have, and that us getting these likes is a reflection of our value in society almost. And it's just like, no. And it tends to affect your self-worth, period. So yeah, all it is is short-term gratification. It only lasts but so long. And then you're left with wanting more. You just gotta get back in. You want another hit. You like the way it felt. You want more. That is a drug. There's this, it's giving us this fake popularity. And it's feeding our egos. It is feeding our egos. And we love it. And we're willing to go to great lengths to achieve it, to achieve that drug high again, 
to get that dopamine back that we felt when we got all those likes that one time we posted that dope ass fire ass picture, right? That is a drug. And because of it, now depression and anxiety since 2010 has gone up 62% per 100,000 girls. For girls 15 to 19, rates of depression and anxiety, which resulted in hospitalizations, has gone up 44%. And for young, younger teens, ages of 10 to 14, it has gone up 70%. 70%. And this is according to U.S. hospitals emissions for non-fatal self-harming. And for suicide, it has gone up 70% for girls 15 to 19 and has jumped a whopping 151% for preteens 10 to 14. That is insane. Insane in the membrane. <laughs> the what? Like, that is insane. Suicide rates have jumped up. 70% for girls 15 to 19 and 151% for girls 10 to 14. I'm just like, wow. The patterns correlate to the rise of social media because social media kind of started around what, 2010, 2011, that's when it kind of like started really taking off and it started becoming like a social norm for almost everyone to have a social uh, media presence, which is scary. But, you know, although some scientists like psycholo psychologist Paul Martson of the British Psychological Society says the correlation between social media and mental health seems to be about the same of the correlation between eating potatoes and mental health, small and weak. Although it may seem that way because, you know, scientifically, there is no proof that the rise of suicides and depression and anxiety has gone up because of social media, there definitely is a trend. So we have to give, we have to heed to that. We have to give credit to that. The rise of social media has affected it, whether we want to accept it or not. Personally, I find myself sometimes on there for hours. And then realizing that I'm getting off of it, feeling bad because I will always find someone that's prettier, that has more money than me or looks like they have more money than me because of what they're posting. They look more successful. They're getting more likes. They're getting more attention than me. And then it leads to feelings of inadequacy, feeling like I'm not enough, feeling like I could be doing so much more and that I need to be, you know, maybe I need to implement some strategies. Maybe I need to do this and this and this to look the part. I need to look the part. The pressure is real, yo. The pressure is real and, and it's, it's stifling. It's stifling. It's making me feel like I'm just not good enough and that I need to step up my game so that I can, you know, let y'all know that I'm still out here. I'm still, you know, this bad model. I'm still, you know, and it's just like, it's exhausting. It's exhausting. And I really don't, I really don't wish this on anybody. I feel it's impacted my mental health negatively in ways that I'm now trying to, you know, um, bounce back from. For some time, I definitely felt like I I just was over it. I was over it. I was, I was like, if Instagram could crash and die tomorrow, I'll be happy. And that's not, like, that's not productive. That, that's not how I should feel. Because a lot of people live their lives on Instagram. Like, like, a lot of people actually gain, you know, it's their livelihood. This is how they make their money. This is how they pay their rent. This is how they support their families. So I can't wish for it to go away because this is really how some people live. But I also need to make sure, I also need to make sure that I'm, I'm, 
I'm doing well enough for myself where I don't need this app in order to succeed. At least that's my goal. It doesn't have to be yours. But my goal is I need to be good, great on and off this platform so that I can feed my family whether or not Instagram is alive. Whether this app dies or not, I'm, I'm, I'm good. And I want to make sure that I'm at that point so that I don't need to be on Instagram and I don't feel the need to always show up when I don't feel like showing up. Sometimes you just want to sit, sit back and, and, and not, not tune in to the rest of the world. And that's fine. I've become a lot of a hermit since quarantine and since COVID started. And it's been, it's been good and bad. It's been great because I'm able to really just focus on myself and, and really try to look front and stay front and not look left and right at what's going on. And she's doing this. Oh my God, he, she, he's doing that. And make you feel like you're not doing anything. I can't, I can't do that anymore. I can't. So there's a way, and I'm still learning this. I'm not here trying to give advice clearly. I feel like I've just been ranting, but this conversation, this conversation needs to be had because it really is detrimental if you're not finding a way to use these social media tools and social uh, networking apps to benefit you in a way that is productive. We all need to find a way to use it that is productive and not detrimental to our mental health. I just want to end with, you know, you are enough just as you are. Do not let Instagram rush you into thinking that you're not good enough. Or do not let Instagram lie to you into thinking that you're not good enough. Do not let Instagram rush you into thinking that you're not doing anything and that you need to be here when you're still back here. Take your time, pace yourself. Your journey is your journey. Your story is your story. J.K. Rowling didn't publish um, what Harry Potter's books until she was late into her late 30s. Oprah didn't become this big conglomerate until her late 30s. So many people, you know, Toni Morrison didn't pick up a pen to write until she was 40. Wherever you are in doing whatever you're doing, you are all right. It is okay to be where you are. Just keep going. Keep going and all will be all right. But do not feel rushed into feeling like you must be making millions and all over the internet and all over TVs at this point in time, if that's not where you are. Pace yourself to reduce the likelihood of burnout. Work hard, definitely work hard and attain all your goals because you deserve this. You deserve to live the life that you want to live. You deserve to live a life of luxury and beauty and just pure amazingness. We all deserve to live that life. But pace yourself. Do it on your own terms and do what makes sense for you. We all have our own individual journeys and lanes and that is all right. And stop, stop, stop basing your identity off of what you do. And definitely stop basing your identity off of IG. You are more than what you do. You are what you are. You are who you are. That's actually a quote from Toni Morrison. <laughs> you are not what you do. You are who you are. Base your identity off of who you are. Who are you without the things that you do? Who are you? 
it takes real self-reflection and real um, awareness of self and real turning back into yourself, turning inward in order to answer those questions. Who are you? Because once you know who you are and what you stand for and what you believe in, that's when you know how to then also put yourself out there. If you're in a job like mine that requires that of you especially, then you'll know what kind of content to be creating and to be putting out there, how much time you can afford to be on there, and then where it's not affecting your mental health. And then you'll be able to figure out how to use it best to benefit yourself, your brand, your business, whatever it is that you use social media for. And if, it, if it's just to connect as well. But knowing who you are, I feel like is at the center of all of this. If you don't know who you are, you're susceptible to all of it. And again, this, this is a machine now. It's turned into a machine that is seducing us to go back to it over and over and over again. It's become a drug. But we have to know how to use this drug, right, effectively so that we're only, use, we're only getting the correct dosage for us individually. Thank you guys for listening. And I just want to, you know, ask, especially for those of you watching, what are some things that you've been dealing with what kinds of emotions has social media brought up in you? What kinds of things do you feel like you are, are going through because of um, social media, whether it's Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok? Has it pressured you into acting differently? Has it made you feel like you need to fit a certain mold? Has it made you feel like you are not good enough? What kinds of things has it brought up for you. I would love to start the conversation in the comments. So write down below and don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and stay tuned or tune in to the next episode of the Victory Over Circumstance podcast. If you guys are listening, thank you so much. Make sure you also subscribe and send a message, send a message. And as always, you can support this podcast and its growth by donating to the cause, by hitting the support button. Thank you guys for listening and I'll see you next time.